walking on sunshine. I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa. I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa. And Is don't want to feel good. Yeah. Just That's keep repeating amazing. those lines over and over. And over again. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you, gentlemen. That's wonderful. Carlito. Manny. We're in a new location now, man. Amazing We location. are in a warehouse. We are, we're at the home of Artistic Skylights. That's correct. And we got two very special guests here on the show. To the right of me, I've got Marco. To the left of me, I've got... Nenzio. Nenzio. Now I can pronounce it. Nen- Nenzio. And to the left of me also, I've got... Carlito? Carlito. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good in blue, by the way. There thank we you. go. Look well, at him. Man. He's you. all set up, man. Well, thank you, gentlemen. We've and got an exciting podcast. We've been, we've been itching to talk about skylights, man. It's really important. I wanted to begin the show with a question. See if you guys can answer this question. Who made the very first skylight? Can you guys give me an idea of what century? That's how far back we're talking about wow. here. I would say uh, late 1900s. <laughs> uh, early, sorry, early 1800s. Got to go a little further back than that. Really? Oh, yeah. So we are talking about a gentleman by the name of Angelo Baravia, 1480. Wow. wow. In a town just outside of Pisa. He's the one that uh, first did it after the Romans started messing around with glass. No way. Oh, no. Unbelievable. And glass was obviously designed for the super wealthy. It was very hard to be uh, made. It was made only up to pieces of three foot, but he actually put it into a dome. Wow. So uh, we're talking 500 plus years ago. Yeah. Wow. Very first skylight. And now here we are, 2020, <laughs> at our <laughs> here. skylights, talking Thanks. about skylights. A, a bit of an evolution there. I yeah. mean, a bit of a... Unbelievable. That's we're, amazing. Yeah. So when I found that little piece of information, I was really, wow, that's amazing. I wasn't expecting it to go that far back. No, neither did I. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No. So, gentlemen, why don't we... Um, okay, so we're at Artistic Skylights. Yeah. And uh, just, just to get started, what's the website? Uh, yeah, so the website's artisticskylight.com. We're all over social media at Artistic Skylight. Uh, definitely check out our page. Fresh content always going up, always uh, showcasing our, our latest projects. Uh, our guys are on site, products going out the door. We love posting up our customers and and whenever they showcase our products we're all over that at artistic skylight 416-747-7233 and then shoot us an email info at artistic skylight.com perfect carlito and i i know carlito i won't speak for him he always speaks for me <laughs> I speak uh, for him he's, all he's got a lot of questions and i've got a lot of questions as well so where did artistic skylights begin let's let's let, let's go back to the beginning not 1480 beginning but let's go back to the beginning we are 2020 we are in our 40th year of service so 1980 is our first year. Very small mom and pop shop, two to three workers. Basically, the grind of orders in the morning, production during the day, delivery in the evening, that kind of routine. We've moved through about four locations due to expanding demand since 1980. How big was the first warehouse? Oh, it was probably about a thousand square feet. Hardly fit. Uh, that's a massive condo uh, suite in e- Toronto. E- nowadays, <laughs> that's nowadays, right. Yeah. right? Mass, and you guys were operating a skylight it, business at a, yeah. a thousand square the, feet. The founder was yeah. able to jam in a couple of pieces of equipment just wow. enough to, uh, you know, put out a, a quality skylight that for those times met yeah. the demand and the uh, standards, right? What are we doing here? Like, this is a little bit bigger than a thousand. Yeah, slightly yeah. bigger. This is how big is this place? We're at 40,000 here. 40,000 square feet. Yeah. Wow. With, uh, full of state of the art equipment now. Very, very cool. Yeah. We're Artistic Skylight's fully trademarked brand now. Uh, we have over 75 different products. Every year we try to bring something new to the market and try to push that envelope, but keeping a very family oriented mentality because we are 100% Canadian, family owned, family Love operated. It. Try to keep that. Some mom and pop shop. Yeah. yeah. We love mom and pop shops. Love yeah. them. We love mom and pop mm-hmm. shots. So that was 40 years ago. That was your dad? My dad, yes. Your dad. So I'm second generation uh, to him, and then now we're on our third generation that have uh, entered the business. And nice. What made him think about getting into Skylights? He's an immigrant from Italy and came here. He actually came at a, as a young gentleman, uh, late teens, and back home, he actually a uh, suit maker. You know, tailor. A, a tailor. He was exactly. a tailor. Exactly. That's right. And came Those are hard to find in Italy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Those are some oh, of the best. <laughs> that's right. 
and came over here and couldn't make it really, you know, there was nothing really a job that would sustain the lifestyle here as a tailor. And uh, he decided to just do a 180 change, get into uh, fabrication, into a factory where a a friend kind of got him in. And said, hey, look, come along. You make a little bit more money than you're, you're, you're making, you know, hemming pants. That's it. And then he got into a factory. It was a sign-making factory. Kind of the same thing. Build frames, put plastic into it. And, you know, and that, that sign company took over a Skylight company out of the U.S. at that time. And he just got into the Skylights through that. And then now here we are. The history. And, and he started yeah. with one unit. That's right. Yeah. And now you guys were saying how many units? To 75? 75 different product lines. Whoa. Yeah. So if you factor in all the combinations, customizations, you're into the thousands of different options. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I know that we first heard about you guys through our buddy Mark from Skylux there. Yeah. Because he's yeah. a huge fan of yours. And roofers handle skylights all the time, right? Absolutely. So I've seen some of the units that he's been putting in from you guys. They, they keep on. Is there a limit? Is there a limit to the size of a unit from Artistic? Is there like honestly it, not in our to, modular system? No. Yeah, no. we try to push the envelope. We try to uh, you know meet whatever is required on site, whether it be you know ten feet or a hundred feet, up to a thousand feet, and so and let it be. You know what I love about skylights? You guys, we'll talk a little bit more about this. That a lot of homeowners are nervous about skylights because they think the whole leak. Thing. And I'm like, it doesn't leak, man. It just, you have to understand that it doesn't leak. What I really like about skylights is the sunlight that you naturally get into your home, especially in the winter months where right. you wake up. And now that we see it with the time changing now, you actually wake up and sun, well, I still wake up in darkness because contractors wake up early, right? <laughs> <laughs> Regular people wake up and they're like, there's sunlight in the house because yeah. of the skylight. That's just how it works. And studies, you guys probably know this more than I do. The studies have been proven showing that you're healthier, you're happier, you're more content because of natural daylight coming into your house yeah. and coming into your business, your commercial space. You watch movies and there's a reason why they have those opening shots where you know it's early morning, curtains come open and the sunlight just drains in. It's healthy for you and it's, and it's a good vibe in, in the house, in the commercial building. So nice. that's what we aim f- to provide. Free vitamin D. That's yeah, right. Free. Our body's yearning for it. It's all free. <laughs> well, I think there's other things that we need to talk about What's more that? than just the light. During the winter season, that also produces heat in your home. When you're going platinum lead or you're going green, it's really important to use the light to the fullest. And during the summer, it's even more important to release the heat. And I'm kind of excited to get into that with you guys also with the skylights. Well, let's talk about the products. Let's go through the gamut of products that you guys have and just uh, the benefits behind each one of them. We range everything from small off-the-shelf unit skylights. So, you know, your typical 2 by 4 acrylic glazed curb mount skylights all the way through to, you know, like you were mentioning, the the operable skylights that release the stagnant air in your house and and recirculate and refresh, uh, you know, what's happening inside the environment. And then you move into the more structural architectural side of things where you have larger capacity skylights that are have much more different options more of a luxury feel and aesthetic to them and just bring a whole different value to the game stuff like glass pyramid skylights barrel vaulted skylights as well all kinds of different systems that we can get into that all play a different part in the daylighting industry nice you know our product line is is quite vast uh we we range everything from a curb mounted skylight which is your your typical two by four four by four units designed to mount on a typical one and a half inch curb uh, on your roof structure they could be glazed with either dual layer acrylic domes that come in either clear on clear or bronze on clear or clear on white configuration each of those have their individual properties what are the benefits between clear and bronze uh, clear on clear, the objective there is is maximum daylight. Um, you know, as much as of the sun you can capture, that's the objective with that. Your bronze on clear helps reduce your solar heat gain, right? Like you were mentioning, heat comes in through a skylight, which is great during the winter months, not so desirable during the summertime. Mm-hmm. The bronze helps to negate and reduce the solar heat gain. And then your clear over white is uh, completely opaque. Uh, lens, white lens. Uh, you can't see through it. It's considered a privacy skylight. So nice. really good for change rooms, bathrooms. We don't want that peeping Tom looking into your roof or <laughs> Annie. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the two of us, we know who is a peeping Tom. <laughs> okay, so that makes a lot of sense. 
It's good to know that there's privacy there. Some sure. people are always worried about, you know, can someone jump on my roof and look at me? Sure. Well, <laughs> you know what's funny is that sometimes you'll get squirrels up there, right? And I'm sure that they'll be hanging out and looking in, right? Because they'll check <laughs> it out. So I'm like, hey, you, you know where my nuts are? Sky right? yeah. for some nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so th- that's nice that you guys have three different options there. My favorite uh, series that we carry here personally is our uh, venting style skylights. Nice. Where they allow fresh air into the home. They are offered in a manual operated skylight, not manny operated, <laughs> manual <laughs> operated. I love that part. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they come in an electric motor system, which is controlled by a remote control where you can just lay down on your sofa or on your, on your bed and just hit the button and Open it, close it, it opens up Yeah, and closes. They also come with rain detectors or rain sensors, nice. we like to call them, as soon as it detects a drop of rain it'll shut down for you the way i've tested them before is i actually just lick my thumb lick, and, yeah, and works, put it yeah, on it and, it, and then i'm like whoa that's magic you know yeah. no did it's you not. really it's, yeah <laughs> seriously yeah, it, it does it, work it wow. needs a minimal does, amount of moisture minim- it's literally one drop so then yeah. i just first time i ever tried it, i just lick my thumb and just put it on no there way. That's and cool. it closed so cool. and i'll it just started closing. <laughs> it <laughs> was wicked. And now we uh, make it a lot easier for the consumer. We have uh, solar panels that are uh, do not require you know a standard one ten volts. You know, going up to the attic and into the skylight. You can just simply install the skylight. It has its own little built-in solar panel, and uh, that powers up the motor. Wow! So you upset the electricians? <laughs> yeah, we're taking because they have nothing to do now. <laughs> Well, the techies will get involved next. Yeah, now that, yeah, that's it. That's, yeah. that's where it's going. What's the maximum opening on those units? How far? I guess it depends on the size of the unit. You know, our smallest uh, is a two by two, two feet by two feet, and they range right up to uh, four by four. That's off the shelf. We have a on our commercial side, our commercial division. We build them much bigger. They come with more uh, complex uh, motor systems and control panels that are a little bit more robust for uh, commercial applications and those we've built those up to uh five feet by eight feet a vented unit a vented yeah. skylight a vented unit that big mm-hmm. wow and the way things are now they're using a lot of commercial products in homes and in, in some of the I love more it. luxurious custom homes and we've been building these uh, larger electric venting skylights for these luxury homes i'm interested are you doing anything for shipping containers yet no uh, because it's really big right now yeah i see a lot of shipping containers now the bedrooms are in there and the huge skylights beautiful bedrooms you're looking up at the stars right we had someone approach us and say hey can we make the roof out of a skylight so you know going wall to wall with it with a full complete complete unit wow I don't know structurally how you would... We did a podcast with the shipping container, and they said as long as you don't cut the, the ribbing. Right. 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 Well, ideally, he said he wants to stay, what was it, 12 inches from the, the actual frame. Right. You, you can still do that. So technically speaking, you can cut the flat portion and pop a skylight there in you there. Go. And mm-hmm. it's still structurally yeah, sound sure. as a unit, right? Yeah, absolutely. That would be yeah. cool to see. Yeah, we, it would be. Oddly enough, we have made them for a couple of clients that have used them in trade shows. So they're, what they're doing is using these shipping containers nowadays for everything, right? They're utilizing them so they don't go to just the scrap and yeah. uh, the older containers. They're using them at trade shows a lot now where they're finishing the interiors t- to represent a, a, home. a home, a room, for example, a bedroom. Let's but say. shipping containers are at, becoming homes now. Yeah, right. And people I get it. want that's these skylights. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and they've put the skylight in there where they're displaying it at a show. We had someone do that. Now that we're on on air, I'm looking for a customer that's going to allow me to do a skylight with a rain head in the middle of the skylight. So that way you could take a shower, the rain head can just dripple on you and you're looking up and you see the sky so it feels like i've seen that before yeah i've seen it a few times i really want to do this bad why not Mm -hmm. yeah yeah my first thought is condensation though i almost want to punch clients out when they say i don't want to put a skylight in because it's going to leak and i'm like do you want to put windows in exactly right like it's the same thing so why you have the concern of a piece of a unit above you and you're concerned that it's going to leak Skylights don't leak these days, man. No, they don't. First of all, just the technology in them is has come a long way. They're built much better, just like windows. I mean, if you were to take a window and you lay it horizontally and you don't install it properly, it's going to leak as well. We've always said that. So, Installation is paramount. A skylight is a very detailed part of the roof, and it should be treated as such, so it should be 
flashed in properly, waterproofed properly with specs and, and should be put in like that. And, and if you do all that, you'll have many, many years of service out of it without any sort of moisture penetration at all. What are some of the little mistakes that some, I hate these three letters, DIY. First of all, DIY should not be on the roof. No. They should not be on the roof, right? Yeah. But, I mean, what are some of the mistakes that people do make when they install a skylight? Is it? I guess it has a lot to do with the flashing, the membrane. It's not properly done. They don't understand step, step instruction, step installation, yeah. right? Is that is Correct. That the, the yeah, exactly. One? Yeah. And especially in a climate such as ours here, we have a lot of ice buildup in the winter and water damming. So nobody really thinks of those those issues. You know, you may want to, you know, just stop the rain, you know, so, you know, shingle around it real tight and put the flashing real tight, which is not always the right thing to do, you know. So there's a lot of other extra steps that are missing there to prevent ice backup, water backup from ice damming. And it takes a little extra effort to uh, make sure that it's done right. It's the same thing with roofing, though. Yeah, I mean, if you just get lazy on roofing, I mean, last year, was it last year we had that wind storm? That's right. Mm-hmm. I know Mark, our buddy, he had a lot of business. That's right. Right? So it's, it, it, installation is paramount. I keep on going back to that. What other kinds of negative, like I, I can't, I'm, I'm not a client. That's the thing about it. Technically speaking, we're all clients because we still buy these products in this industry and we still hire other people to install them. I'm just trying to figure out what are some of the negative things that clients would bring up? Well, the, you touched on it a little bit. Condensation. condensation. That is a huge problem, again, in our climate when winter rolls around and you get the extreme cold weather outside, bumping head with the warm, humid air on the interior of the envelope of the home, right? You know, you can't really blame the consumer for going to his furnace and turning up the humidifier, trying to get as much humidity as they can in the home in the winter because you got uh, mill work that requires... Moisture. Moisture. You got us, ourselves, humans, we, yes. we, uh, we need, need it. We need 32% right? moisture. There you yeah. go, exactly. <laughs> and then what happens there is as soon as it goes up against the glazing of the skylight or a window, because it's very common in, throughout the fenestration industry, whether it's a window or a skylight, you'll get that bit of sweating. Now, the thing with the skylight being up higher where... It's more in an area of, uh, considered as a pocket, exactly, yeah. a pocket where the humidity builds up. It tends to show a little more. Our skylights are designed to control a moderate amount of condensation and weep it out without having any issues. But when you're starting to crank your humidity levels well above 40% and, you know, and you're, you're outside at minus 10 minus 15 degrees we're, we're back into the science class then we're back yeah. exactly and, and and they really don't want it you know you they can't don't blame talk the, it. they don't want to talk they don't want to hear they about it point they just at an object and they want to blame that object yes, for and, the fault and well, you, you know you understand also, the frustration but. that's right but there's also maintenance in everything in construction every part of your home your roof your windows your doors correct me if i'm wrong many of my friends have skylights which I love and you know I've always asked them questions about the skylights one of the things they told me was a homeowner should always clean the vent holes that mm-hmm. also builds up dust and sometimes it clogs and that's where the actual water will, will wick out from the important part is don't just buy a skylight get it installed understand the skylight so that you don't complain and blame somebody else or the product it's not the product failing you still have somewhat of maintenance to take Correct. care of every that's few true. years clean your vents out Correct, yeah. exactly. And that's actually in, in some of our uh, maintenance manuals, getting up and, and cleaning out the uh, condensation track, just like you would your windows. You know, you want to maintain your windows. You want to clean the glass, keep the tracks clean. So what are you doing about height now when, say, someone has like a 16-foot ceiling and you need to get to clean it? Is there an easy way to get up on the roof and like flip it open? Is there a new new techniques now it, or it, exactly you know you wouldn't want a homeowner trying to scale a, you know a, a 12 even a 12 foot uh, step ladder and it's not stable it's not you know and you're trying to reach the clean we are like ourselves I, I don't know about if any of the roofing contractors do it but we we offer a full service to our clients if if they need us to take a look at their skylight once a year go we'll do it from the roof side oh really yeah. we'll climb up we'll open it up we can dismantle it and, and mantle it to the manufacturer's specification, which is ensured that it won't 
you know, have any issues after that. And we can clean it out for them and replace a, a seal or a gasket if it needs it. So that brings up installation. Yeah. So I guess with the units themselves and the, and the industry in general, it's evolved. Like, I'm assuming the installation has gotten a lot better since day one, 40 years ago. What's the changes in installation? And then I guess I also wanted to try to figure out, do you guys have your own installers that come in and, and you, they do it for you guys? Or is it contractors yeah so that's you know that's kind of our differentiating factor here you know we are a manufacturer we we design our product for canadian weather by canadians in a canadian facility and we offer our support to our our customers but we also install our own product and when you're dealing with us you're dealing with us we have our own trained personnel logistics crew our trucks it's our hands handling it you know you're guaranteed from start to finish that we're on your side designing manufacturing the product installing it and then the support that goes on above and beyond the installation itself i love that i'd like to kind of ask a couple more questions i like that you you talked about homeowners having all these so-called myths and we i like to squish them and get rid of them because i think you know at one point skylights were really huge and yeah. then i felt like it faded out for a little bit but now it's really big and i think the difference now and you know many said you know guys trying to save some money and do it themselves that's where these go wrong it's not the skylights that go wrong it's the install you have to use a really good roofer and it's hard to find a good roofer there's many roofers mm -hmm. out there yeah. but you have to find a company that understands it one of the things you guys said at the beginning you said there's like a one to three inch lip on the outside of the skylight is that yeah. typical or do you need to go 10 inches for snow load or do you have to go 12 inches like what's the minimum and and how do you prevent the ice damming or the snow damming of the skylights? Typically on a residential uh, asphalt shingle roof, we'd like to see a curb of six inch. A two, two by, by six. six exactly. Two by six, yeah. Put up on edge, soldier style. And, you know, that would be sufficient if you do all your, putting in all your ice and water shield, all your damming uh, uh, protocol, let's say. That would be sufficient. On a flat roof, it's a little different because the drainage is a lot less. Typically, want to go about nine inches above the uh, finished roof. It's good to know. Good. A really big question. Most people feel, or I've, the people I've spoken to, they're so afraid of buying a skylight because they don't. They feel that once it's in, they don't want to ever remove it. We can easily replace the top dome and not have any issues after just saying like if there's any cracking or it gets busted from like hail that some that happen not very often it does and and that's where the problem lays uh, when you are uh, dealing with a, a re-roof situation and now you have the skylight in place an original skylight from the original roof the problem is uh you know the roofer looks at it and is sort of taken back and frightened about touching it and and detailing around it well that's Kind of, the wrong thing is to leave it in place because then he cannot do his his proper. Uh, he won't be able to roof, roof it, properly. it properly. You know, yeah. you need to bring your membranes right up and onto the curb, tight to the curb, and to get a air and water tight seal. And the way you do that, of course, you would have to remove the skylight. When a skylight's been sitting there for 20, 30 years, you can imagine trying to take that out if, if it's been put in place with caulking or silicones, probably going to damage that trying to, to pry it off. It's, it, you know, it's been beat down over the years from the UVs. Uh, so your best option is to replace it at that time. The, the, the value is there, you know, for a few hundred extra dollars uh, when you're spending a few thousand is probably the smart thing to do. Now you're guaranteed for another 20, 30 years. Okay. So what's the warranty that you guys offer for everybody? Our warranty is pretty on par with, with industry. It covers everything from you know glazing to sealant failures, component defects. We pride our, ourselves on having a, a very sound product. You're next to guaranteed that the product is, is working each and every time, but everybody likes some reassurance. With 40 years of experience in the industry, our product is, is sound, and we back that up definitely with our, with our warranty. So uh, what's, the, what's the number? It's yeah. 10 years. 10 oh. years. Sorry, sorry. Okay. That's right. right. 10 well, years. Anytime, I mean, you're, if you're doing your roof, if you're doing asphalt roof, you're doing it ideally 20, 25 years. I don't know That's if I right. would push it to 30. Yeah. And so if you've installed a unit there, then you it makes more sense to just replace the unit at that time and factor it into the cost of the roof itself. Correct. Now you're, you're guaranteed, again, that the whole envelope, uh, the whole roof escape is all complete, good for, you know, 
worry free for the next uh, 15, 25 years, you know. I got to, because I saw this note, what is the purple plague? <laughs> what, what is, what's the purple, like I see that and my first oh, thought is Prince. I'm just <laughs> like, I'm, what's going on here? Prince and Skylights, what's going on? What is that all about? It's a topic that no one really understands or exists, but we definitely know it's a fact of, and, and I know roofing contractors have seen this time and time and again. It basically, it's a, but the better part of the 80s, there was a, a huge flood of offshore acrylics that, that hit the Canadian market. We know today that, you know, offshore products, their tendency to be maybe a little bit cheaper, a little bit less durable, just not as good as your something that's locally sourced which is why we we source all of our products in within North America all these skylights that were made with these materials which is almost all of every manufacturer at that time there's a very small pool of uh, acrylic suppliers they started turning purple how quickly was that that they like years yeah yeah within years yeah yeah uh, you know like purple purple yeah like like vibrant purple like like a know. violet yeah no wow. really yeah. i would have yeah. thought it would be going yellow like yeah. that's what i was gonna ask like i thought the polymers would turn yellow and i i've seen yellowing but yeah. purple i've never seen yeah now like, ye yellowing occurs in a in a polycarbonate not in an acrylic it's in the same family the polycarbonate is a, a tougher material it doesn't break so it is impact resistant and that because of the polymers in that, it tends to yellow from the UVs. Still very strong, maintains its strength. It just tends to yellow. The purple plague that we're talking about was on the actual acrylic plastic supplied okay. uh, offshore again. And that yeah. was, and that's like Marco said, that's why now all our uh, raw materials are sourced out of the US and Canada. I love and hearing that. Yeah. So just like Prince, keeping it home base, right? purple's gone, it's, unfortunately. Yeah. We rarely come across it anymore. <laughs> uh, on that note, I actually just want to take a, just a small pause. And is it Green Book or is it OBC? Oh, oh no, no. It's building code talk time. <laughs> <laughs> and you were going to help us stuff. out with that, right? Yes, that's right. We uh, want to share a little tidbit about the uh, OBC, the Ontario Building Code, uh, in relation to uh, skylights. One of the, I, I guess we'll, we'll touch on the one of the more important aspects of skylights in the building code when it comes to the building code, and that would be in Division Three. That is the supplementary standard, uh, the SB10, also known as SB10, and that is where you'll find your uh, U value of the skylight. That is the uh, thermal. Uh, performance of the of the skylight of the unit of the unit correct Perfect. and brilliant and those numbers that value changes from climate zone to climate zone so whatever your whatever climate zone you're building in you may want to check that because the inspectors are really looking for that nowadays uh, you know looking at making sure that you meet that requirement for and efficiency the unit that you guys install in Toronto is completely, is it slightly different than the unit that goes into Nunavik? Is that the idea? Our unit skylights, uh, we're one of the few manufacturers in Canada that actually have Energy Star rated skylights. So if wow. you log onto the Energy Star website, you go onto the skylight fenestration industry, you're going to see there's about four to five different manufacturers there, us being one of them, which is the top rating for our type of products. You meet Energy Star, you meet all of these supplementary uh, standards below that. So homeowners should just get rid of, uh, like, let's get rid of these myths. This is another myth. People are worried about losing heat energy or cooling energy. It's all a myth, really. Correct. Because we have to stay to these standards of having our thermal break. That's right. And it's, it's all calculated uh, scientifically where uh, as Mar Marco said, he touched on Energy Star. Where so our Energy Star products, it is being installed in in none of it. As many, <laughs> <laughs> I just chose none of it. Okay, it, 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 so I paid attention in class. It's, <laughs> it would be uh, the skylight is built to actually let in the heat, solar gain essentially. Wow. So you you want a, a thermal unit that allows the sun to sort of come through and create heat gain. And that way it does warm up the interior uh, because they experience many more months of cold weather than they do of warm weather. Yep. You would want that unit to perform better through the winter months, allowing some of that heat. Now, if you were in a, a climate where it's warmer, you would sort of want the opposite where the glass would keep out the, the heat and keep the interior cool air trapped in, not letting it 
escape through the glass panel. Nice. There's always a, that stigma of, you know, skylights leak and energy escaping. We always get the question, you know, do your skylights leak? We always like to joke and respond only when it, only when it rains. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, You're all good. I, You're I all good. good. <laughs> Just the, the, to cap that off, the truth is we've been doing it for such a long time now and, and the sealant and silicone game and technology has grown exponentially in the last 40 years that you're a guaranteed a, a good quality product. So what are the options? Say I had this beautiful skylight and I'm all about skylights. I just love natural light. The more you can bring in, I'm an off grid kind of guy. Many things that skylights will do for you being off grid. But if I want to just go dark and I have a skylight, what are the options that I could put in? You could build that right into the skylight itself. So picking the right type of glazing. So we talked about bronze tinted acrylic domes. The, your glass options give you a more of a wide variety of that. So tinted glass, you know, something similar to what you would find on a, on a car. Reflective mirror glass, which does a really great job of blocking out that solar heat gain, especially if you have like a third story loft that just collects so much sun and it's, it's hot. You want to keep it nice and cool, but still get that natural daylight. These are aspects of the skylight that take care of all those concerns right off the bat. And then, you know, you always have the option of uh, blinds, you know, just your, like your typical window that can be installed. With skylights, it gets a little bit trickier because you're dealing with excessive heat, which blinds will, will trap between the skylight uh, and the blinds itself. So there's always a good gap to keep there between your, your skylight blinds and the skylight itself. You know, typically between 12 to 16 inches below that skylight level, and, and you should be pretty okay. Is there a basic difference between the commercial units and the residential units? Because I'm assuming you might want to have it a little more protective regarding that thermal transfer on a commercial side versus a residential or vice versa. We find that on residential, you know, you're dealing with homeowners, they want to protect their investment, right? Our residential products are heavily based on thermal braking technology, heavily utilizing PVC profiles to break up the interior and exterior environments. That being said, our commercial products, you know, we don't sacrifice those properties at all. Our commercial product actually recently have been tested to the latest NAF 17, North American Fenestration yeah. Standards, and we can officially say that we have proper test data on our commercial products, which a lot of companies can't provide. Just because it's a commercial building, you still got to show it some love. But because the open environment, you know, air circulation is much greater, those thermal breaking properties are still there. We still utilize that heavy profile, but it's not as a huge concern uh, in a commercial area. I'm just looking at some of the units around here and I'm just thinking, can I put these in my house right now? <laughs> no, no, I, was, I wasn't thinking that. I was like thinking, you know, I'm over 200 pounds. Can I walk on them? Are they strong enough for a healthy, good looking man to walk on them or what? Or is you talk it... about me, Manny? <laughs> <laughs> how strong are they? Like how durable? How... Yeah, full disclosure, skylights aren't fall protection and we don't market it as such. Oh, I wasn't thinking that but, it was going to be like that. But, you know, we do carry a product line that is fall protection series. We have it lab tested. We have the data behind it. Wow. It uh, meets the OSHA guidelines. Wow. Um, so... To talk some geeky numbers, 1,750 foot-pounds of energy or load wow. on the skylight. So to break it down, that's a 250-pound object at a maximum of seven feet. On a roof level, that's you know that's quite high. Yeah, um, I'm that's, okay. That's pretty, I'm, yeah. I'm six three, two hundred and fifty <laughs> pounds. Be good, Carlito. I'm okay to but, fall but, on but it. But you missed the good looking part. That's all. You missed that one. Uh, wow, so that's pretty strong. Yeah. So you know you can jump on our YouTube channel and you can see us dropping like stuff that. on it. Yeah. Uh, steel I beams, just massive. You know, heavy sandbags from the lab itself. Then the kind of cool part, the object falling on the skylight, they'll safely land, be captured get off the skylight and then you know you'll see us pushing the lenses back into its original shape oh wow so yeah it, so what's the hang on so what's the youtube channel is is it just on their artistic skylights the channel yeah, yeah youtube artistic skylight search it up artistic skylight and our channel will pop up we have our videos on our brand new website as well artistic skylight.com chock full of really good gallery photos and videos such as you know dropping 
stuff on Skylight. And if that you I like, see. if you like MythBusters, you'll like this episode. Oh, really? <laughs> no way. I gotta really? check it out. Cool. I'm totally yeah. checking it out. Yeah. And then the handle again on on social media at Artistic Skylight. Even more important for me now, like you know, being a builder. You know, Manny made a couple of jokes earlier on. You guys are talking about. I've never made a joke. I, I love the I love the story about the hundred bucks in the pickup truck, the thousand square foot uh, space. You know, starting a business small. The thing is, is homes were large at one time, and now homes aren't. It's even more important to start using skylights now. You're trying to get as much light in as possible, make it feel as roomy as possible. The importance of small homes now. Everything's going small. You were you were making a joke about thousand square foot homes and it's not and it's not a joke everyone now has 500 square foot homes i think this business is perfect for today it's perfect because the reality is that in toronto you've got very long narrow tall homes Mm -hmm. and for the most part you're semi-detached sometimes you're in a row so you can't get any natural light coming from the sides you can only get it from the front or from the back and the roof If you're clever enough, you can actually renovate that attic space and then put skylights in the roof. And you could actually bring in a lot of natural daylight inside, down the stairwell, bring it down to the second floor, possibly even to the main floor. That is huge in these narrow, tall homes that are typical in Toronto, right? So you're right. You're right. A lot of uh, designers are putting them into their design, into the urban type home where they are all in a row. And like Manny said, tight to each other where you can't get glazing put in on the sidewalls of the home you know flooded in through the roof i used to have a home like that in the Tinkler and dufferin area and i had pigeons nesting in a window on the side <laughs> and i had to bring my ladder up about 25 feet and you can't pitch the ladder correctly no i was literally cirque de soleil back and forth between yeah. the neighbor's brick and my brick while i was working on getting rid of the pigeons man yeah i was pretty talented but i mean i'm sure if i showed that on instagram today yeah. Some of our techs have been through that, where they go down into the city with, uh, you know, to go service something or look at a at a unit, You're scratching and your they're head. like, "Oh God, one of these!" You know, you can't even prop your ladder. I was listening to a po- one of your older podcasts with uh, Mark from Skylux, and yeah. uh, you know, he talked about roof safety. If the government's really keen on on roofing contractors being super safe you know why not make it mandatory to put up scaffolding like they do in europe thousand percent man. so you know one of our products we offer are, are is a egress uh, roof hatch skylight wow. um so you know you guys keep talking about these these high loft homes three to four stories very steep roof pitch why not make it mandatory to put roof access built into the home itself you know an interior staircase or ladder that can be easily accessed by any roofing contractor, any maintenance building operator. It's a great um, idea. Not just for residential, but for commercial as well. That's a great and idea. And the yeah. beauty is it, it's like a skylight. It brings in the light and you can swing it open as, as a hatch, yep. as a door to get out onto the roof. I don't think you guys have felt the pressure yet, so the pressure's coming now. What? So Question? The questions? question is, do you guys have skylights in your home? <laughs> it's like the uh, shoemaker always walks around with the uh, shoes falling apart. And, 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 and if you yes. do, what just kind do you have? I, I do in my home. I have a uh, curb mount glass fixed unit over my uh, staircase. And the reason it's fixed is just that area of the home is more open and doesn't require the ventilation. I decided to go with a, uh, just a fixed unit. And uh, the reason I went with the glass is it just sort of follows. You could see it from the front facade of the house. So, you know, you just wanted to keep with the slope. And I went with a flat glass unit there. I like that. You? I just bought a house. So I'm (laughs) trying to pay off that mortgage before I get (laughs) it. But then you can see the light. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) That brings up a good point. Uh, So what, what is the basic difference between glass and acrylic? Great question. The ongoing battle between glass and acrylics, it, it's its still very much raging on. To set the record straight, glass is definitely superior to acrylic domes. It, when it comes to thermal performance and energy efficiency, glass is the go-to glazing type. On the flip side, acrylics are much more versatile. They're much more economical option for the budget-conscious consumer. This being said, both options are great options. They're both leak-proof guaranteed, both aesthetically pleasing, especially for the acrylic side, which we have full complete control of and how we form them so we've definitely gained a much more profile dome lens and it has that glass like clarity as well to it you guys produce everything here pretty much just the ig units we don't produce here we we bring those in what would that actually be the insulated glass units okay yeah so that would be the glass panel those are are supplied to us already sealed 
with uh, with all the option of uh, whether it's argon gas in it, low E films, uh, it already comes like that from our glass manufacturer. Would it be contradicting to say that you had the UV protective that you wouldn't get as much heat in your home? UV rays and, and uh, heat gain treated separately, right? Okay. So UV is, uh, you'll notice it on your, on your wood flooring, on your dark furniture or dark uh, paint on the walls where the UVs will start to fade and break down those colors. The heat is, you know, what you feel, uh, yeah. and 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 just you know, sweating in in your your third story loft or or whatever it may be, right? I thought we were past the days of clients thinking that skylights are an expensive, luxurious item, especially with a lot of stuff that's going inside these homes nowadays. Are are your clients are they still kind of talking that they still think that these like a skylight is a luxury? You know, we believe that it, that they are but you guys have a range like i mean you guys have inexpensive units to very expensive units but they're very expensive for a reason and then they're also inexpensive because you guys are building them a certain way right can you guys just elaborate a little bit on that we have the products that are uh, much more budget conscious like like we we're talking about the acrylic unit skylights that will will fit the need of of you know a quick re and re uh, removal and replacement you can really drastically take that price tag up depending on different options, not to mention your actual scope of work for the installation portion of it. Is it an existing unit? Is it something brand new that you're putting in? Uh, and if it is, that not only entails the skylight itself, but the interior down below as well. Framing, drywalling, re-roofing, uh, the whole nine. So it can get quite expensive to install a brand new unit, but there, there are options for, for both sides of the, of the spectrum. If we're going like new build, I actually want to try to let the listeners know about some exact numbers. How inexpensive are we talking about and how expensive can we get for a unit? In a new build, not a re and re. A new build, actually, if you're incorporated during the build, mm -hmm. you know, the product itself is a couple hundred dollars. Got it. And then uh, the labor around that, uh, you know, to uh, roof in, build the structure into the roof trusses and the, the, the shaft and all that. You know, you need your framer to get in there and get up in, into the attic and, and work with the trusses to build the structure then you're going to need your uh, drywall guy to tape and mud and you know into more detailed areas to build the shaft and so that's all going to add cost to you to you and your client right then you have a piece of art oh you do i mean it's art that changes daily Absolutely. it's not the same piece of art every single day that you look at it you see something new and amazing absolutely it's never boring and it's different Sky skylights to me are I'm building a home and I'm planning to put at least three skylights nice. in my kitchen. Definitely doing a bathroom skylight. I love art and there's no, if you want something that brings in natural light and have something that someone's going to talk about, there shouldn't be a price value to it. Okay. It's always going to be giving back. No, and, it, and I love the options that you guys have about releasing heat. That's actually going to save you money. Like nobody wants to talk about where a skylight will save you money by removing heat or adding heat. Those are really big ticket items, right? Correct. It is really funny, eh? Because you'll get a lot of clients who will look at windows and windows salespeople will talk about the benefits of the window, triple seal, quadruple seal, yeah. qu whatever, octop, whatever, sealed, <laughs> right? And, and just like thermal and cleaning. But you guys are offering that same and they don't really want to hear that regarding a, a unit on the roof itself. But that's where... I love giving that a eureka moment to clients where you start explaining to them that you're in the summer months and you've got all this heat building up inside your house. You could either turn on the AC or you can open up your vented skylight and let mm -hmm. all that heat dissipate from your house. That's right. It gives you a draft. Correct. Especially right. in, the, uh, in the early spring. Yes. Or in the, in the late fall where you're not, in the early spring, you don't quite have your AC running yet. And just opening up a window with the skylight and get some convection airflow through there works wonders you know or you know, same thing in the uh, fall time it may be a little cooler at night but in the daytime it warms up and uh, you don't want to turn your ac on at the end of october you know you pop open the sky they open a window again but you can you can save up to 20 percent in your energy efficiency by releasing heat gaining 20 percent is massive on your bill so Correct. releasing that heat yeah. like I, I just want people to understand it's not just a view there's so many perks to well, having we, a skylight. Well, we've always said that it's not just a single line item on your construction budget. You have to actually factor in 
the overall cost that yeah. you are spending or saving and or you know what i mean so by actually getting a skylight unit you're not turning on your ac unit sooner you're not one of the first people in the neighborhood to turn it on which we all know is hydro consumption and we all know hydro in toronto is really bad if you're not turning on your hydro consumption and you're saving that energy and you're having a nice convection draft that's saving you money and your house is actually better i've gotten really tired with clients where they literally leave their houses sealed in the winter and that just sealed right into the summer nobody ever wants to open up the house and let the fresh air come in and out and that's what the windows and the doors and the skylights were designed for you have to understand that a house is a living breathing thing sure so you need to let it live and breathe you don't want to choke it and kill and, it right so and especially an area of the house where, where high humidity is is uh, a factor such as a bathroom a hot steamy shower the kitchen you know you're boiling a pot of water putting in some pasta or something uh um, yeah you know, now we're talking yeah uh, <laughs> we're all hungry uh but <laughs> hang on you're croatian they're italian i'm portuguese I'm quarter italian if anybody's having quarter pasta it's the three of us man quarter german you're gonna have some goulash croatian. or something like that i don't know what you're gonna that's eat. hungarian by the way <laughs> uh even even a garage you know you're in the winter time oh yeah the cars started you know you have co2 wow, emissions that's brilliant a garage yeah. i yeah. thought about that over and over even my own garage i thought about putting two skylights units there that's because the brilliant. garage is always, always dark, dark. Yeah, exactly. and then what, what is in there one single 60 watt led ball yeah, that's right <laughs> and that's your garage and i'm like add a, a, a pool of blood and you've got a horror movie yeah. here yeah. is what it is but if you've got two skylights you got a yeah. disney movie you know what i yeah, mean it's absolutely. like fun and you know it's i like it a lot but we're talking about energy efficiency again now you don't have to have your lights on how many people leave their lights on because they can't see Yep. Natural light. There's Light's nothing better than in. It. And, and even on a dark, gloomy day, a rainy day, you're still going to get, still get it. a lot. Because it's not like a window where it's on a vertical. It's overhead, and you know, you're know you optimizing the, whatever light you're harnessing, whatever sunlight you have, even on, a, on an overcast day. You know, the best is coming through the top, through the roof, right? And then switching gears to the commercial side of things, when operations are all throughout the daytime and you have a, a bank of 10 to 30, 50 skylights in, on a commercial unit, that's a huge amount of daylighting coming through. Imagine having your artificial lighting switched off the entire time your workers are in the warehouse picking materials, fabricating. The amount of energy savings that's, that goes behind that is tremendous. Well, let's talk about sound. We haven't even talked about sound. You know, Manny just triggered my mind to this is most people keep their windows closed for a reason. They don't want the outside sound. But when it's a skylight and it's on the roof, there's really no sound. You're going to hear the birds, you're going to hear the wind. Those are like pleasant, you know, zen feelings. Are there so, specific absolutely. details that you guys have done for sound for to kind of reduce sound on the units? Our profiles are, are quite heavy and, and quite thick, making it great for the thermal side of things, but also noise dampening. On the glazing itself, the option to use laminated glass, it's got great properties to it. We talked about UV rays. UV, uh, laminated glass takes out 99.9% of UV rays. It's more of a security type glass where if, if it gets shattered or broken, uh, it, it sticks together, similar to your, your car windshield, temper laminated. And then on the topic of noise reduction, laminated glass is a noise reducing material. It's got a great a dampening property to it. And what we add to that is a, a third layer of glazing. Of course, the uh, the new infamous triple glazed windows and skylights, you know, the latest innovation, that is the key, really. You know, you put a triple glaze with a laminated interior panel and you're, you're pretty much soundproof. Manny brought this up the last few podcasts. We had a, a window company come in and they mentioned that on the first main floor, it's not mandatory to do triple, but on the second or third floor, you do want triple for sound. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, totally. It was yeah. a building science guy, by the but, way. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, I, when I looked over at Manny, he was telling me a story earlier about he no, likes I suntanning. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Do you hear a lot of stories about people not wanting to go outside in suntan, like inside with the skylight, like so that all what? that beautiful lights coming in, you don't oh. have to go outside, you can stay naked inside yeah. your house, no, you you've can't. got this beautiful you can't light do coming it with in the on UV, you. With the UV unit, you can't do well, that. Well, wait, let, let them answer. Them. No, the be. UV is not... <laughs> Tell Carlito. <laughs> no, but we're going to add that to our uh, sales pitch. Just, That's going to be our latest sales pitch. Just for the creation market. Just well, for the creation I, market. I always right? have, I've had, 
so when I speak to my customers and I put radiant heat in, the husband's always telling me I can't get my wife out of the bathroom anymore. She's laying on the floor. So I was hoping to hear a story where you guys were like, well, my customers' wives now are always under the skylight sun tanning. They don't have to hit the sun tanning beds anymore. They just three in one. <laughs> there you go. Have you guys come across a roofing material that doesn't work with your units? Or are we all good on everything? I know that a lot of people nowadays are getting into metal. They're getting right. into metal roofing, which I love. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. ACM, mm-hmm. they're getting into that. People still do clay, very expensive, and slate. They still do that. So is there a roofing material that does not work with you guys, or you guys are handling all of them no problem? No, yeah, we're handling all of them. So typically, the higher profile roofing materials, uh, such as your clays and your uh, seamed uh, metal roofs, we can either custom make your flashing kit for you if the roofer requires or the contractor does. Otherwise, typically a lot of them uh, tend to go back to the, the supplier of the roofing material and they carry many different types of flashing profiles that they can flash the curb with as well. So yeah, not a problem. What are the kind of roofers that you want installing skylights and what are you looking for in roofers yeah just just attention to detail really like like Enzo was saying earlier skylights are the detail portion of any roof you know you can have a 100% foolproof product but if it's not going in properly you're gonna have potential issues everyone preaches the same thing do your research on who you're hiring don't always go on the lowest cost if you do all your background checks and you make sure who you who's working with the product um, you're going to get a good result. That's the beauty of social media. Everybody's yeah. being vetted on a second-by-second second basis. Yeah. And we're looking to uh, develop a program where we uh, are going to offer training uh, oh, to, to really? the roofers or contractors or installing our we product. We love that. We love coming back to the classroom mm-hmm. and just learning something. So we're, in, we're developing it now. But in the, in the meantime, uh, we have no issues coming out to site. You buy our product and you need us on site. You need some of our expertise there. Uh, if you're having issues, uh, you don't know how to handle it, how to tackle the install. Uh, you know, we can send out a tech to uh, help walk you through it. What I love about what you guys are offering there is being GCs, you really want to know what your trade is going to be doing so that you can watch them and stop them from making a disaster or you know just a simple mistake that could cost everyone it's great that you guys are having that in-house and i want to be invited please absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. are you bringing These homeowners in first. on that also right now we're looking at just the contractors i.e the roofing contractor and general contractor we don't need uh, the homeowners there. <laughs> <You don't. laughs> they yeah, i mean they're the end user they just you know want to see it and put in properly they have the trust in in you guys you know and us making it so We'll give them suntan lotion. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know a lot more about architectural structural units. Yeah. I want to get into that world. If you guys can dive into that a little bit. We keep talking about these, uh, the, the smaller off the shelf unit skylights. But when you start talking about architectural structural skylights, they're, they're just so much more than just a product. They're a system that adds that s- much desired wow factor to your build. You're talking about inside and out. Inside and out. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We, we pride ourselves on, on and taking as much care on the exterior appeal, including the interior aspect of things as well. You bring up a good point because you know what? I, I, I'm sure, Carlito, you, know, you do this because we're in the industry. When you drive around and you see a good looking house, you actually still look at the roof. Mm-hmm. As beautiful as the shingles are or whatever roofing material is up there, I've always been of the mind that you should have complementary materials on different facades of homes. And for whatever reason, when I see a skylight on a roof, puts a smile on my face, man, Mm -hmm. because I already know the benefits of it coming through the house, the sunshine in the morning, the sun glow in the evening with sunsets, right? And plus that that convection kind of thing. So whenever I look at a house and I see that skylight, I got a smile on my face. Until I I see his van behind me, then I don't have a smile on my face anymore. No, (laughs) you know what, Manny? I mean, I've mentioned it a few times. I'm an off-grid kind of guy. And any platinum lead home, and for people that don't know platinum lead homes are, these are homes that are built airtight, high R value, you know, triple being glass, self-efficient, you know, battery backup, solar. Skylights are in that whole family. It's mm-hmm. so like removing heat. Again, I, I could say it over and over again. It's so important off an off-grid home. Adding heat and light, huge savers. Like people need to just 
remember that they're making their money back. They're not That's just right. spending money on a product. They're getting their money back Absolutely. in the long run. And it, it adds value to the home as far as resale goes. For sure. People don't get it. They don't think of it as a negative, right? No. They're thinking of it, oh, thank goodness you guys did it. Because That's we right. Don't, we we exactly. don't want to do it. They walk right. in. They see the nice new kitchen. They look up at the ceiling. They see a beautiful skylight. You know, new baths done. Part of the listing. Uh, architectural skylights are something that, that definitely makes a statement in the home. It's an area in which we specialize in. You know, you can highly customize the product from multiple different frame finishes so you know we talked about we're talking about curb appeal as well as interior appeal you can have different finishes on the exterior and interior your glass glazing product uh, specification can be as simple as a clear tempered on tempered glass to a uh, mirror reflected piece of glazing as well uh, which has all the added benefits of, of uh, reducing solar heat gain so this isn't just about 75 different products this is 75 different products with a large amount of options attached to each of these products. And unlimited different sizing. Does it become a little daunting sometimes when clients want to kind of go through this because you sure. guys are basically offering everything to them? Sure. Yeah. But you guys point them in the right direction. Yeah. So, you know, you're taking a couple of things into consideration. First and foremost, what's your budget like? Are we going to meet those requirements? What's your roof structure like? Can we put X daylighting system or are we only limited to Y? And there's a couple of different criteria that, that needs to be sought out before you start talking about specific products. That's what our approach is, is, is a very support oriented approach to our customers to help them through the process because skylights are uh, not an everyday language. Uh, a lot of people will talk about doors and windows, uh, but when you start getting up to the roof level, it starts to become a little bit foreign and isolated. And we help our, our customers go through that entire process to make the right decision. And we have a great customer service team here, so they walk you through. The last bunch of units I want to talk about are tunnel vision units, right? Yeah, so those are our solar tunnels, the newest product line to uh, our already vast product offering. The purpose of a solar tunnel is it's, it's basically a tubular lighting system. It's designed to transport sunlight from the roof level into the interior environment below. It does a great job of capturing natural light via a dome assembly on the roof level, carries it through tubular reflective tubing, and then right into the home or the commercial area down below it. Without interrupting any of the structure of course the integrity of the roof you're yeah. not cutting out any uh, joists or rafters what's the diameter of the unit so we have four different diameters 10 inch and 13 inch are our most popular for residential applications and then when you're getting into the commercial side of things our 21 inch is very popular wow. and then 32 inches which is the <laughs> so far as we know is the the biggest diameter solar tunnel uh, on the market. So that is huge. That's huge. So mm -hmm. if we can get really geeky with it, a 32 inch solar tunnel will provide you with 24,000 lumens of light. No way. Holy we, yeah. we all know an average light bulb is about 500 lumens. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so 24,000 24, lumens and covers an area of approximately 1,000 square feet, which is a moderate sized condominium in the city of Toronto, right? So wow. it's, quite, it's quite large, it's quite effective. It's what we're all about. Bigger is better, right? Of course. <laughs> so. Could you use the 21 inch one in a residential application? Are you guys. You Oh, yeah, you can? that's very yeah, common. You can. Yes, yeah. because typically you're, you can still uh, fit that between the, the rafters. Right. The right? rafters, right? Yeah, but built to go between uh, two foot twenty-two inches. Your two foot uh, rafters. It depends right? on the framer. If it was Dep a Monday right. framer or a <laughs> Friday <laughs> framer. <laughs> yeah. but, but that's absolutely brilliant. Like now you're opening up your just for example, you open up your closet and then typically it's dark. Yeah. Now you're like. Bam! Yeah, right. I'm awake. The fun thing about social media is that you get a whole kind of crazies on there and, uh, and talking, we know it. talking nonsense. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and one of the, the biggest myths behind solar tunnels or, or tubular skylights is that they amplify and magnify heat like a like a, a magnifying on a on really? a hot summer day on on the I sidewalk. I can see that yeah. though. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. No, just <laughs> if you don't know if you don't know anything about right. construction, yeah. Right. It just it just feels that way, right? Right. And it's just simply not true. It's just the the tunnels are built to transfer visible light, not heat gain. It may be a touch hotter, but it's not it's not a magnifying glass burning an ant on the side of the sidewalk. But you'd also deal. you'd also have to <laughs> pop your head in that hole. Yeah, kind of like exactly. <laughs> Now you can sunbathe. Yeah. <laughs> I did have a question about one little question. It comes up all the time, and I just wanted to kind of find out why it happens. 
a lot of people have told me that they try to stay away from skylights because there's always a crackling in the corners of the mm -hmm. older skylights. I mean, the technology has changed. We're, we're talking about 500 years of the skylights. Where'd you get that information from? <laughs> from you, Manny. <laughs> so why, why does the cracking happen on the older units? What has changed to prevent that from happening? Well, again, that uh, goes back to the gaskets. Now they're a lot better than they've ever been with uh, EPDM and santoprene type gaskets that don't break down from UV exposure. The older units, uh, what, what tends to happen, uh, you know, over the years, the gasketing does sort of break down and dissipates and now you get your uh, glazing. More specifically, this would happen in the uh, older acrylic styles where you get the plastic rubbing on plastic. What happens in the evening cools down overnight the plastic shrinks as the sun comes out in the morning it, it, it starts to expand with the heat on it and starts to um there's movement in there and and, and you'll hear that crackling but effect. this has now been repaired and this doesn't happen anymore right correct just for for the myths of what people when you speak to people about skylights they're like we were talking earlier people are afraid of those three or four questions we had and we're so far ahead in technology now people Absolutely. need to now put that aside and realize it's 2020 now and skylights have come a long way and so has wallpaper that's right believe it or not <laughs> <laughs> who would ever thought <laughs> it's true it's a big it's a big fashion statement that's what i'm trying to say it's it's coming back right. and it's coming back strong right skylights and wallpaper. wallpaper. <laughs> Not wallpaper, man. Not wallpaper. He always says, this isn't a wallpaper podcast. <laughs> How did you segue from skylights to wallpaper? Oh, uh, you know, I've ADD. I don't know how we got there. I want to touch upon uh, the installation. I want to get into the world of, uh, in, because you guys have your own yeah. installers, right? Mm -hmm. These guys, I'm assuming they're all guys, unless you guys were lucky enough to find a woman to, to yeah. install. But uh, these guys, they know what to do. They get there and they know exactly the lay of the land. And so can you guys just walk us through a little bit of the installation our methodology or, or our techniques highly revolve around modular skylight systems and we're, we're talking structural architectural style skylights here bigger sized curbs bigger style roof structures our products are meant to be installed and shipped to site in modular sections we do as much of the manufacturing in our own factory so that once we get to the job site, um, we can open and close an opening within a few hours, uh, depending on the size of the unit. So being you know, the property manager uh, with finishes down below, you're always worried about opening your interior to the exterior environment. If we can guarantee you that opening is going to be uh, completely sealed within a few hours, I'm, I'm sure you'd be pretty happy about that. Very happy. Yeah. Maybe you schedule and we'll schedule with you guys with the customer service. Exactly. So all of a sudden, yeah, we got a hole in the roof. You guys want to come and take care of it, right? Which right. you guys will come and schedule. It's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because it's all done in-house and, and handled by us, the manufacturing, the logistics, and the installation, we're very much so detail-oriented around scheduling. You may have workers down below or office workers. You know, it's a, a finished building. Um, you're having some work done on the roof. You know, we can organize and coordinate around whatever needs are required. Can you guys tell me, because everything's mostly manufactured here, the turnaround is fairly quick. By the time I order something, I've given you guys a size. When can I expect it on the job site? When can we begin to look at scheduling it? The larger architectural skylights require a little bit more detail. Now, what we do in-house is because we're involved completely in the, in the design of the unit, you know, we'll provide you with complete shop drawings of your skylight, which mark out all your proper dimensions and your curb dimensions and what the skylight is going to look like. From that point where you're okay with the design, and measurements and you've signed off on everything it can range anywhere between four to six weeks of manufacturing now for the off-the-shelf unit products in stock always ready for for purchase same day and as you get into the larger unit skylights you know like a seven by seven unit we have all the components ready to go two to three days and you're on your way Whoa, installing really yeah yeah we've made some large operational improvements over the last year or two which we're very happy about and we're very proud to present to our customers we're providing our customers with a go-to reliable source for all their daylighting needs hey carlito i see a shopping buggy around here you want to go shopping <laughs> how about i just put you in there and shoot you at the door <laughs> i mean like we can like just grab these units man and just go no no we got special privilege i, I actually have here. a better idea let's, let's 
pretend that. that we're in a casino going to break in and we'll pretend we're climbing through the <laughs> skylight. <laughs> That's a good one. I got Mission Impossible. I wanted to ask you guys, where is, I mean, 40 years. So you guys got 40 years of experience. So are, are there any units? There's no units that are still out there that are four years old, are there? There probably are. Oh, well, yeah. There are, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've, totally, huh? I, we've caught up with some of our old units on job sites, you know, where they're uh, replacing the roof or just wanted to uh, get a more energy efficient product put in there. And uh, we get there and we see our old, old labels from wow. way back in the day. That must be a sight. It is. Yeah, we, we take those and we bring them back and we sort of all stare at it and <laughs> talk over it. Where is the future of Skylights going? Like the next 40 years, what are we going to see? Or like what's going to happen? What are you guys working on? What can you divulge? I think uh, refinement of our products is, is where we're headed to. It's better building materials, more stylish looking products, just refining the processes so that you know we can reduce costs and, and costs to the consumer, but still presenting a, a good, high quality premium product uh, that you can be assured in and guarantee that you're, that you're getting what, exactly what you expect to, to be receiving. And, of course, the efficiency uh, as the standards and codes get more stringent. We're looking to build well above those as we have been for many years. Well, that's what we've always said is like there's no reason. I mean, as much as we got to pay attention to OBC, the building code, we've always that's minimum. That's and right. It's always yeah. nice to hear people and suppliers and other tradespeople talking about building beyond that and better. Because what is that structure going to be like 10 years from now? Right. Where is the building code going? 10 years from now. That's right. If we know we're already heading there, why don't we start building like that today? I think it comes back to something you said earlier too. You really don't need to be rich to enjoy a skylight. You can be a blue collar, white collared person and, and get all the benefits out of this. Still save money, make your money back at the end. How many of you guys have skylights in your car? Or, or in moon my car? roofs? Like in your, do you have moon right. roofs, sun roofs? Yeah, do you guys? Yeah. yeah. I mean, why not have it in your house? Why That's just right. have it in no, your car? It's, it's yeah. standard. You got yeah. a window package. It's not standard. Door. It's it's it an should, upgrade. It should be standard. It's so worth the money. So my point is, is that if it's so worth the money in your in your car, why wouldn't it be sure. the most important in your biggest investment? And we've seen it, it trend up. You know, you mentioned it earlier, Carlito, that it sort of seemed to have tapered off. It, it was a big thing in, in the '80s, and then sort of tapered off, and and it's gaining a lot of steam again. The designers are just loving skylights. They're putting them in all their designs now, and it's almost a necessity. What would have been the, the reason for tapering off? Would it just been product failure or just bad product in the industry, like the community? Yeah, that stigma. That stigma, uh, huh? Yes, uh, just in, in, in trying to build cheaper, late 80s. Things were just being put together. I, I don't know if you guys remember mm -hmm. uh, back then. and uh, Just cutting a lot of corners, never fit in the budget for some reason. You said designers are just, no, wait, we're putting in the skylight. We'll cut somewhere else. I can guarantee everyone wants a skylight. If you mm -hmm. speak to someone, someone will always say something like, I know one person that doesn't want a skylight. Goes by the name of Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true because he could still let in the moonlight. Here's the Hungarian. Isn't he Hungarian? <laughs> <laughs> the moonlight. Actually, that's a good one. That's a good one. So you can let the dark in. Yeah. <laughs> you can the let the dark. moonlight in. <laughs> I've always mentioned, sky like, I say skylight every job. Like, if you talk to my customers, they'll always say, oh my God, he wanted a skylight in the staircase, he wanted a skylight in the closet. And the first thing they say to me is, like the old myths, you know, yeah. that there, these problems are still happening. And they're just not. And I think that they tapered out, be, not because of style, because of poor install. And the product was that it's, even though it's been around for 500 years, our products really haven't gotten better in, except for in the last, you know, 30 or 40 years, right? right? So like skylights, people just need to, whoever's listening needs to realize that skylights are bulletproof as long as the installer followed the instructions. Absolutely, 100%. And today, you know, everyone's doing science research on on the effects of daylighting and you know natural daylighting in the school, in the educational systems, in your workplace, in your home, and everybody understands the data is there, and it's a known fact, and it's it's the truth. So why not put a product that feeds to that? I, I want to get to more fun stuff. What are some of the coolest project or the projects that stand out in your mind that you guys have done? It's a great question. 
There's so many of them. I just down on Liberty Village, uh, everyone's revitalizing the older buildings that are down there. What better way than putting some natural daylight? For so sure. we took our uh, barrel vaulted skylights, and those are a great product because they're modular and they can be made to any length that you require. Overall dimension was about four feet by a hundred or so feet. Wow. of just pure skylight daylighting. It was fun to see. The Eglinton bus terminal down off the Allen Road there, they finished uh, renovating. So we did all the skylights for the, the bus terminal that's on the street level there. That was really fun because we got to use a, a newer material, polycarbonate multi-wall material. Polycarbonate itself is very strong and multi-wall utilizes extra layers of polycarbonate merged together to create exceptional U values and thermal performance. And we had these really large continuous barrel vaulted skylights that actually connected to each other or butted into each other on pre-insulated curbs that we also supplied. How long was that unit? It, not so much long, but the length and the width of it. 50 feet by 50 feet. Easily, so, yeah. Yeah, something like that. And we also did uh, the train shelter at Union Station. Actually, the uh, night the Raptors won game five in the finals, you could only work at night there. They shut the, the trains down. We were on the roof, which is right beside Jurassic Park, <laughs> right, at the uh, new Scotiabank Arena now, yeah. right? And the, uh, so we could, every time the, there was a basket made, we could just hear the roar <laughs> coming. Yeah, we were on the roof of the bus shelter, just right next to it at Union Station. And that was pretty cool. That was pretty yeah, cool. and that night they won, and so as soon as we finished working into the you know early morning, as we were coming down off the roof and trying to get out of the downtown core, those people were still swarming around, <laughs> you know, going crazy because they had won. So yeah, that was a little fun night. I don't think people realize like when you don't look around or you're not paying attention, you just don't realize how many skylights are out there. You go mm -hmm. into a shopping mall and you think you're enjoying the mall, but it's really the natural light, flooding in that natural feel of walking through a park. Instead, you're walking through a mall. People don't realize what it does for you, how the enjoyment it gives you, the feeling that's subconscious. And, and when you really pay attention and look around, you get to see how many skylights are everywhere. And that just a, a testimony to how bulletproof a skylight really is when it's installed properly. Bring some vitamin D and some, well, yeah, some they, smiles you know, back. The designers of these shopping centers have done their homework. You know, they, they know it adds to the whole shop experience, bringing in the natural light. You know, there's a lot of money involved in that when they design and thinking about demographics of all that. And skylights for them is a value in that sense where it brings in the light and it does affect the psyche and you know yep. the subconscious and it makes you want to spend more money <laughs> well the funny part is people are going to listen to this podcast and they're going to start seeing skylights everywhere yeah. you so start, you'll start like, looking up the idea <laughs> it's sort of what i do every day when i wake up <laughs> <laughs> from the minute i wake up i can promise you that in the next within the next two years i will send you an email you will see a closet with a skylight a bathroom with a beautiful rain head coming down. I also want to do a staircase with a ceiling fan that can push air up or down to remove air or bring fresh air in. Three big things and then Manny hit it. He just made my life more difficult by adding skylights to my garage. Yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to put a skylight in a garage, think about man. that it workout room. Always. Like, people are doing wraparound glass and then we're forgetting about the most important part. The skylight. Yeah. You know, now I'm thinking about gym. So next time a customer says, hey, can you build this? I'm going to be like, and does your gym have a skylight? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have, a lot of guys have bought skylights off us for their sheds, too. Wow. I was just about oh. to say that because Carlito knows I've got a thing about Canadian sheds, man. They need to evolve. But I think if you guys actually built a really thin, long unit to fit into sheds, right. that'd be great because we never have any light in sheds. Ever. No. You might throw a little window there, right. but if you had a skylight in the top of the shed, you'd have a lot of natural daylight yeah, and moonlight. Definitely. One of the things we're always sitting down and talking, and the best part about the construction life now is that 
instead of me sitting in someone's garage while they're drinking beer or in someone's mm -hmm. backyard, we're sitting here talking about it with the people that know best about their own product or guys that are installing it. And this is coming right from the horse's mouth. But contractors always say to me, how hard or how far has it come to replace a skylight, the drywall repairs around it. Is there an easier way? Is it faster now? Is it smarter? Like removing and replacing a skylight from inside? Because whenever someone's doing a repair, the contractors are always telling me, oh, I gotta rip the drywall off. It's connected mm -hmm. to the wood. Is there a better technique now or is it? When you're replacing a skylight, sometimes it, the skylight's already been leaking for, for a little bit of time. So the interior work is necessary. There's nothing really you can really do about that. Uh, it needs the work needs to be done. It's it's a necessary evil. I think more so with the you know new building products and and you know what's available to contractors as a whole. It's much easier to trim off the old junction of where the old skylight was and where the new skylight is. You know new tools and, and new techniques that that everyone is sharing now on social platforms. Uh, everyone's gaining that awesome knowledge of how to do it quicker and how to do it easier and make it look better. If you could change one thing about a skylight installer's work. Uh, just really uh, having them pay attention to detail and get on the phone, give us a call, and we'll walk you through it. You know, make sure you do it right the first time, right? And I love that. Don't undercut your pricing, and, and that way you can do it properly. There's just so many factors to well consider. Said. Roof access, how do you get to the roof level? Is, is it high, is it steep? You know, what kind of roofing materials do you need? Don't forget to price in the cost of the skylight and picking the right unit and picking it up from the manufacturer, whoever it may be. Your overall scope of work, is it just roof level? Is it interior work as well? If you price yourself too low, you're gonna evidently start cutting some corners to, to make it work. It is what it is, skylights, it takes the, takes the the time and takes the labor to do it but it adds the value yeah it right. adds a huge amount of value this has been great okay we got to do a little what are we doing now oh man he we're doing green book talk <laughs> green book time <laughs> green book time tell us about green book time all right so let's talk about one of the one another big one that everybody should be doing section 142.06 one, worker failing to wear fully full body harness connected to fall arrest system while or on getting on off suspended work platforms. What's the fine? What do you guys think the fine is for that one? I would say 5000 Thank God you're not an inspector. <laughs> <laughs> less? A little it, less. It, uh, this is, this is, these are always uh, the minimum, the first. Oh, okay. So when first we do offense. these, it's the first offense. Right. You are right. You're leading right to, to the, the third like, offense. Oh, or, I see. Yeah. The as, higher, yeah. It's 350 bucks on your first time. So just put your harness on. Yes, yes. you never know. It, it will actually save your life save, one right. day. It's totally important. And you know what? Just looking over at Manny, I know it's a podcast. I think he's got some color being here today. <laughs> <laughs> From all the sun all, shining. All the skylights. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so once again, Artistic Skylights in the website. www.artisticskylight.com. Social media at Artistic Skylight. Or shoot us an email, info at artisticskylight.com. 416-747-7233. Awesome customer care reps will take care of you. Any questions, any support you need. We're right there, white hand glove service at your service. Ooh, I like that, huh? And all you green thumbs out there, this is green. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. Carlito! Get us out of here, man. <laughs> Marco, thank you very much. Right. Thanks for coming by. Nancy. Thank you very much. Nance. <laughs> this has been very enlightening. I love, and I know he's learned a lot. We always love sharing more information to the industry. And this is all about sharing the information to the construction life. So thanks again for listening, everybody. And we'll tune in the next episode. Wait, we're 905. We're at Artistic. 416 CO, baby. <laughs> out of here. Out of here. <laughs> 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 Great.